All right, ready? All right, coach me, coach. Coach me, coach. Give me a chance. Give me a chance. I love it, coach. I love it, coach. Pound green pound. Pound green pound. Smoke green smoke. Smoke green smoke. Fourth quarter. Fourth quarter. Discipline. Discipline. Commitment. Commitment. Effort. Effort. Pride. Pride. Enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. Coach me, coach. Coach me, coach. Piss on Coach Buck. Piss on Coach Buck. How do you express gratitude to someone who still affects your life to this day? Carl Buck Nystrom is a college football legend. He's been called the greatest offensive line coach of all time. This five-time national champion is feared and loved by his former players. He was born the son of a fireman in Michigan's rugged Upper Peninsula. He graduated from Marquette's Graverette High School in 1951 as a three-year class president. He also earned 13 letters in five sports, which remains a Marquette High School record to this day. He entered Michigan State in 1952 as an unknown football walk-on. He left in 1956 as a consensus All-American and academic All-American, the first Spartan ever to win both honors. Buck Spartan teams won two Rose Bowls and two national championships, including the 1956 Rose Bowl 17-14 win over UCLA on a last-second field goal by Dave Kaiser. Kaiser said after, I didn't know if I made it or not until Buck Nystrom swarmed all over me. In 1957, he began a college coaching career that would take him from the prairies of Fargo, North Dakota, to the mountains of Boulder, Colorado. When I went into college, uh, uh, I wanted to be a teacher and a coach. And as a result, uh, it was not hard for me to select this profession. And I think when you look at it, uh, it's the idea of being able to communicate and work with kids and get them better and all those good things. Despite his many stops, he's most closely associated with his alma mater, where he coached under Duffy Doherty and George Perlis in Northern Michigan University in his hometown of Marquette. His coaching resume includes 12 bowl game appearances, six Division II playoff teams, and three national championships, including one at North Dakota State, one at Oklahoma, and one at Northern Michigan University. The 1975 NMU team had the greatest one-year turnaround in NCAA football history. Hi, this is Bobby Tuma from the 1975 National Championship Football Wildcats. What a year it was. 1974, we were 0-10. In 1975, we were the national champions, 13-1. What was the one big difference? A guy named Carl Buck Nystrom. A family man, he and his wife Joan have been married for over 57 years. And they have one son, Kyle, and three grandchildren. Buck continues to mentor young coaches, including his son Kyle, who is the assistant head coach and linebackers coach at Central Michigan University. He also continues to inspire young players through his Coach Buck blocking camps, team camps, and coaching clinics. He continues coaching young men to this day as a volunteer high school assistant at Gwynn High School. The opportunity to work football camps with you in Wausau and the opportunity that you come down to West Iron County and work the Iron County football camp for the past six, seven years has been great. Uh, my students and players thoroughly enjoy it. None of these accomplishments, however, fully explain his mythic stature among coaches and his former players. The nationally famous fourth quarter conditioning program created by Coach Buck in the 1970s provides a clue to his enduring impact. Now for the Buckisms. We're going old school. Gold dogs, you're like young pups. All you do is crap and pee all over the field. As I show up late to the film sessions, and a room is filled with wildcats. I come in late, open the door, and I got the old Avery's out with the honky tonks. He can't get up in the morning. Son, I'm telling you, you can't wear so many hats. No, you can't be a good time, Charlie. 
pounding the bricks and spinning the records in the dorms all night. Mike Baruti said, hey coach, there aren't any records anymore, they're all CDs now. To which Coach Buck replied, I'll put a Japanese disc up your ass, Baruti. You know, as I'm trying to explain what we should be doing, and you just said, hey Pop, I ain't interested in hearing you talk. You go over there, I'm pissed over here. He knows when you play football, you gotta play with a what? A pulse in your calf. I'm on script, man. I'm on script. This is Brad Shaneman. The one you called Shuneman? You nicknamed me Shu because you always thought my name was so complicated. So I always said, Shu, get your ass over here. Stego man, be an athlete. You ain't from Krivitz anymore. Ah, Mason, I give up on you. I'm just gonna put you back in a box, mark a big X on it, and ship you back to Escanaba. Kanka, Kanka, Kanka Key! Ah, uh, Gregory, quit pissing and moaning. You sound like a Philadelphia goddamn lawyer. All you offensive linemen think you're too smart for the game. What the hell do they put in that Menominee water down there, Stuart? Because you know what? I got a photosynthesis mind. I never forget a thing. My favorite thing was, give me a chance. Give me a chance. When I wake up in the morning and I see the sun, I know that I've got a chance. Tom Green Pound. Why does Sweeney's back hurt? Because he's fat. Rudy, you black like a sick whore. Hand on the line. Sometimes, put your hand on the line. Comes out when they complain about doing their chores. Give me I right, Teak. I remember you calling a great play. Fake 134 boot, Y under. They call timeout. So I run over to the silent. I'm saying, no, oh, coach, keep the call on. Great call, great call. Give me wing right, 38 Ram G. And by this time, I'm halfway out onto the field, and you're screaming, and you make sure you tell Gary if it's a 40, he's got a block down. I would love it when coach would say, catch a Tory. Get in here and run P10. I think everybody's favorite. It's your signature play, 34 lead base. Run the same damn play. So we ran 34 lead base. One of my favorite words is the word simple. It's a simple game with simple rules. Simple play, simple drill, and more often than not, a simple guy. I'm tired of people lying to me around here. This guy over here says he can run a 4940. Shit, he couldn't run a 4940 with a, with a motor shoved up his ass. You guys must be roommates. You're on a non-aggression pact. I don't want to hurt the other guy. St. Saint Joe? What are you worried about St. Joe? They can't piss hard against the sidewalk. My wife and I have three boys at home, and they fight sometimes. I find myself telling them, don't worry about your brother, you just worry about yourself. The man looked at you and said, coach, I'm tired. Tired? I'm tired too. I know, I know, good call, I know. And you're just staring at the other coach across the field, and he said, all right, I just want to make them sweat. And you waited, didn't say anything, Refs blow the whistle, he says, same call. Push me back in there, first down, another first down, another first down, we get down, we score, tie the game, go into overtime, and uh, end up winning the game and, and making it to the semifinals. Coach Buck, MD, his universal prescription for all injuries on the field. Tape an aspirin to it and get the hell back on the field. I don't know if it was you helping me get the job at Michigan State, and all the great things you taught me while you were here and I was here, or whether it was the famous phone call you gave me when I got the job and you told me you wanted to make sure at your alma mater the, ins the uh, inmates weren't running the asylum. Look, they are the Spartans. Steve Grinzel called Buck Nystrom the orneriest player to ever suit up for Michigan State. With a toothless grin and perpetually skinned nose, he was nicknamed The Tape. He carried the intensity of his playing days into his coaching career. There's another monument that uh, I want to show you. Kind of reminds me of the intensity that we played at and the intensity that you coached at. Even kind of looks like you. The best description I can give is he was like Mick, the trainer in Rocky. You're training like a damn bum, you know that? You were a tough coach to play for. Um, you were a very demanding coach. I don't know if I'm the only one that's ever uh, said that to you or not, but um, you demanded our best in everything that we did. I know you coached us hard because you told us, I can't coach you any harder. Okay to use old magazines as, as forearm pads because if you do, Buck 
won't know the difference because he just thinks that's the way the game's supposed to be played. He couldn't get you off the field. He takes those linemen and work them and work them and work them. I had to go over there and get you, let them go so they wouldn't miss the training table. Class? Class my ass. You want an education, you should have went to tech. A lot of the lessons learned, a lot of the hours spent on the field before, as an offensive line, before the rest of the team got on the field. Uh, a lot of time spent on the field after everybody was off the field. You brought a sense of urgency, something that we'll never forget. I remember being in spring ball or in fourth quarter practices and we're running and we're hitting. And Coach, I remember when you came back and you actually stepped into that fourth quarter workout and uh, you ended up inserting yourself into one of the drills and you actually uh, hit one of our guys and he uh, had to get to the, go to the trainer because he didn't, didn't quite land the right way. And, so the legend was back. Thank you for slapping me in the head, because I needed it. I think it was Coach Barron, they needed some loose change or something for a can of pop, and you had these high white socks on, you rolled them down, and there's a bunch of money stuck to your leg. Buck would always play a, a heated game of racquetball, usually against uh, either Freeman or, or Marana. Play three, four games, get all sweaty in a collared shirt, and then jump on the team bus and go for a seven to nine hour drive. Good for us that we sat in the back of the bus. Not smoking a cigar, but eating a pack of cigars. Or not eating the apple with your hands, but with a key, because your teeth were in your pocket. Fire off the ball, butts down! Yelling at us on the sidelines, telling us not to swear. You'd be the only one doing the swearing. All of a sudden, we're all lined up. He doesn't, and he sees that Marty Krause did something wrong. And instead of kicking him in the butt, he kicked him square right in the nuts. Marty goes right down to all fours, and the only thing Buck said was, move the drill up 10 yards. Krause is hurt again. Get low, low, school block, school block. I was a freshman and, and missing a block in uh, practice that, you know, we just talked about in film two hours ago. He's yelling and, you know, spits going everywhere, and his teeth are flying everywhere, and he pick up those teeth off the grass, throw them in his mouth, and he'd have his grass coming out of his teeth. It was, it was, uh, <laughs> as funny as it sounds, it was awesome. You even got after your own coaches. You can't coach with your hands in your pockets, Malway. We ain't sending the tight ends over there. You got a lean-to drill going on in that skeleton over there, and they ain't coming over there. They're staying here with me. Move the drill. I don't have enough space. In fact, I can coach football on a posted stamp. Get me a posted stamp. I can coach. If you can be a better guy when you leave Northern Michigan than when you came in, that's a tre tremendous accomplishment in itself. You know, looking back on it now that I realize that um, as much as you were committed to football, you were probably more committed to um, taking us boys and turning us into men. You told us repeatedly, just be a good guy. I, I never forget, and even when I coached my kids and youth football, when, it, when you put your hand on the line, that hand is on the line. We know it's not behind the line, we know it's not in front of the line, and it's on the line when the whistle blows. I wanted to please you so much. At first I thought you were crazy, and I cursed you, like a lot of us did. But after a while, I figured it out. We all figured it out. I spent my whole life just wanting to put a smile on your face. And that's the one thing I knew, that if I could put a smile on your face, if I worked hard enough or we could have enough success that you would smile, that just, that just helped me feel like I actually accomplished something. Thanks for teaching me how to be a man. I know my wife appreciates it. I know my kids appreciate it. And if I can be a fraction of who you were as a person, I feel like I've accomplished a lot. The greatest thing you taught me of all your attitudes and all your sayings, the greatest one was discipline is the greatest form of love you've ever shown someone. I said it to my players all the time. fourth quarter in the turf room and coach Buck was there and 
everybody just kept on talking about Coach Buck, Coach Buck Nystrom. And everybody knew that he was a legend. And just all the excitement that picked up from the first time he was at that first practice. You taught so much to all of us as far as the fourth quarter program. If you look it up on, on the internet, you'll see LSU and Michigan State and Alabama all doing the same thing that we did back in 1975. Four trash cans surrounding the, the turf room, us running, us puking, us having fun. And that's not only what we did and, and what you do, but it's how you live and how we live and, and it's who we are today. Fourth quarter will always live right here in my heart. The enthusiasm, the courage, the pride, the effort, and the discipline is what makes up my foundation on a daily basis. Coach, you probably heard this a million times from uh, hundreds of different guys. But thank you. Just want to tell you, Coach, that I love you and I think about you on a daily basis. And over the years, I've thought about you more than you possibly could imagine. I don't remember a whole lot about, um, you know, the specifics of what you taught me in football. Because once I got out of school, those things didn't matter anymore, right? But what you taught us about teamwork and commitment and discipline and hard work and being a good teammate and all those things have, uh, have stuck with me for the last 25 years. Every day, please know that I aspire to follow your advice, to work hard, to be accountable, and to be a good guy. Your enthusiasm for life and your desire to always be your best has and will inspire me forever. People know who you are. Coaching staff, administration people, they know Buck Nystrom and they all have a story to share and they all have a big smile on their face. You're not just a Northern Michigan legend or a UP legend, you're an American original. And I'm very proud that you were my teacher. I remember his pregame speeches talking about how fortunate we are to be athletes and never not be thankful and to be humble. And I've used those life lessons my entire life. So Coach Buck, from the Wildcat Nation, and from myself, I'd like to say thank you and go Cats. I understand you're in the fourth quarter and you've got a dogfight on your hands. I just want to take a second and say you're in my thoughts and prayers. And I appreciate all the lessons that you taught me while I was up at Northern. I didn't realize the lessons and what they would mean later on in life, but I do now. I also teach my sons to take adversity head on. I run 34 lead base right at it. It's tough, you know, tough times. But <clears throat> I know he's not a quitter. I got one more thing for you, Coach. For all the times we scored points up at Northern Michigan University, Here's one for you, coach. I bleed green and gold. 45. Four! Fourth quarter, forever, coach. For the, you know, the, the thousands of men that you have impacted over your career. You, I mean, thousands. Think about that. I mean, you made each of us better football players. Uh, you made better coaches. You made better husbands. You made better fathers. You made better men. So we understand now that you're in the fight of your life in your fourth quarter. We just want you to know that me and all my guys are with you in the fourth quarter. Four! Coach Buck, it's Andy Avery coming to you from Ohio, Clinton Massey High School. These are the 2012 state champions. These guys know how to pound the pavement hard. They got something to say to you, Coach. Four! Four! The fourth quarter. <laughs> Thanks, Coach Buck. Buck George Lansing, Bison, 1965. You kicked my butt so many places, and I want to thank you. It's things that you did for me, it carried me through my whole life. I love you. You take care. Coach, you made me better. You made us better. Love you. Miss you. And, uh, Thanks for everything. All I can say is I love you. And if you need anything, just let me know. Dan Stencil, Senior Center, 1975 National Championship Team. Flashback, 
to December 13, 1975 at the Camellia Bowl in Sacramento, California. NMU completes its Cinderella turnaround from 0-10 in 1974 to 13-1 1975 national champs. In the locker room after the game, Coach Buck, you addressed us and told us how important that this accomplishment was and how hard it is to duplicate. You made us uh, realize what we had accomplished as being something significantly special and something that hasn't been done to this date. Through your leadership, you know, we all feel that you've evolved from being a traditional coach and mentor to a father figure and friend. Coach, we thank you for all you are and all you ever will be. Best wishes. Needless to say, it's fourth quarter in this thing that we call life. And once again, we will put our hands on the line. And in the ways that we were coached, you will stand up and meet this challenge head on. With discipline, effort, pride, enthusiasm, and most of all, courage. Coach Buck, we all love you.